Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve concatenated words. While this is a hard problem, I don't think it's crazy hard. So maybe by the end of this video, you will have boosted your confidence or maybe even shattered it, who knows? We're given an array of strings without duplicates. We want to return all the concatenated words in the given list of words. And a concatenated word is defined as being made up of two shorter words in the given array. So basically we have a list of words like this. How do we know if this particular word is a concatenated word? Well, if there are two or more other words in the string that we can concatenate together to form this word. So it's pretty simple. And there are multiple ways to solve this problem. Thankfully, even a brute force solution will actually work in this case, but you do have to be slightly intelligent about it. And I'll tell you what I mean. Suppose we're given n words. We could create a decision tree that for every single word, we choose to include it or not. So we have the word cat, we include it or we skip it. And then the second word we have is cats. So we uh, include that word, which would mean we concatenate it with cats. So we end up with a word like this or if we skip it we would end up with something like this and then on this branch we'd have just cats and then here we'd skip it and we'd basically continue this entire process for every single word in the string what this would give us is by the end of it we'd have every single possible concatenation with all of these words how many would we have well for each word we can include it or not include it and we have n words so we'd have two to the power of n possible words now a among all of these words, we would not want the ones that just include a single individual word. So we could subtract n from this, but that wouldn't change the overall magnitude. But this is the number of possible concatenations. And then for each of those words, we would check, do these concatenations exist in the word set that we were given? The ones that do, we would add to the result set and the ones that don't, we would not. And then we would have a result set that probably looks like this and we could return it. The problem here is that obviously this would be the time complexity. The question is, can we do better? Yes, we can. Instead of generating all possible concatenations, let's go through every single word in the input list and individually ask, can this word be made up from other words in the input? That's easy enough, but there's actually two different ways we could do it. One way we could do it, suppose we want to know if this word is a concatenated word. One thing we could do is go through every single word in the input list of words and check if it's a prefix of this string. So we would check cat. Is that a prefix of this? Yes, it is. Then we would want to know, is this already in the word set? If it is, then that means, yes, this is a concatenated word. If it's not, then maybe recursively, this word is also a concatenated word. So we would have to check going through every word in here, can we find a prefix for this word and then you know continue the process? The problem is that for this word, we would have to iterate through every word in the input. And we're told that the max length of words is going to be less than or equal to 4,000. That's not a super large value, but there's another way we can solve this problem. And that is by, instead of going through every word in the input, we can instead just check every possible prefix of this word. So we could check, is C, is this in the word set? Is CA in the word set? Is CAT in the word set? And keep going like that. Now, how many possible prefixes of an individual word can there be? Well, we're also told that the max length of an individual word is going to be less than 30. So the length of an individual word is going to be less than or equal to 30. And it's easier to iterate 30 times than to iterate 4,000 times. So doing it this way by individually checking every prefix is going to be more efficient. That's why we're going to do it this way. So at a high level, that's basically the problem. We're going to go through every word in the input. Then for that word, we're going to check every prefix. Is that prefix a part of the word set? And the way we're going to check that is by converting the list of words into a hash set so that we can look it up in O of one time instead of having to linearly scan through every word in the list. But otherwise, that's it. When we do find a word such as cat, then we want to know, is this a prefix? Then we want to know, is this already in there? Because if it is, then we know that it can be broken up into these two words. Therefore, this is a concatenated word. And then we can stop immediately. In this case, this is not, I don't believe. But then we check the word cats. That is here. 
Then we check dog cats. Is that in here? I don't believe it is. So then we would have to recursively run the same algorithm on this portion of the word. So we would check every prefix, D, nope, D-O, nope, D-O-G. That is here, dog. And then we check is the remainder of this, which is cats, is that in here? Yes, it is. So therefore, this is a concatenated word and we would add it to the output as you can see over here. Now, analyzing the time complexity of this problem is definitely not straightforward. I will save that for the coding portion, which we're going to go ahead and do right now. So remember, what we want to do is convert the list of words into a hash set. That's easy enough. So we'll just do it just like that. We're going to recursively define that depth first search that I was talking about. That's what I'm going to call it. And we're going to run it on every individual word. So that's the only parameter that we're going to pass in. We could also pass in a word and the index. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to create substrings for the word as we like break it up. But you could do it the other way. Passing in I would probably be a bit more efficient because you don't have to create copies of this word. But I don't think that's like a major deal breaker. I prefer the code to be clean. Uh, instead of filling out this DFS, what I'm going to do is show you how we're actually going to use it because that's pretty easy. We're going to have a result, which is going to be the list of concatenated words that we're going to return. And the way we're going to populate them is just by going through every word in the input list of words. We're going to check if it is a concatenated word by running DFS on it. If it is, then we can just go ahead and append this word to the result. Now for the DFS, what we're going to do is go through every prefix for the word, just like I showed. So for I in range length of the word, but we don't want an empty prefix. So we're actually going to start at one because if we did have an empty prefix, we would end up seeing that the word itself is in the word set, but that's not what we want. We want to break it up into at least two or more words. So that's why we're going to do it this way. Now, the prefix itself is just a substring, which is going from the beginning of the word all the way up until the index i, but not including the index i. And then we want to know if the prefix is in the word set, we have access to the word set because it's defined outside of the scope of this uh, function. If the prefix is in the word set, then we want to know is the rest of the word also in the word set, which we call the suffix. So we'll also define the suffix here. So word starting at index I and going to the end of the word. That's the remainder of the word. So if the prefix is in the word set and the suffix is in the word set, then we can return true. But there's another case where we might end up returning true. I could add a second if statement here, or I could just include it in the if statement up above, which is what I'm going to do. So this is one possibility. And the other possibility, or here, is that prefix is in the word set, and we run DFS on the remainder of the word, because we know that the remainder of the word is not in the word set, but maybe the remainder of the word can be broken up into two or more words. So we're going to pass the suffix in here. Can the suffix be broken up? In these two possibilities, we would end up returning true. Now you can notice that we don't actually have a base case here because normally the base case would be if the word is an empty string, then we would return true. But here we're handling that over here. If the prefix is in the word set and the suffix is in the word set, then essentially we don't even need to run DFS anymore. So that is sort of our base case. I want to quickly mention that this solution itself actually will work. As you can see here, we can make it slightly more efficient using a dynamic programming caching technique, though I don't think it's really necessary. It doesn't change the overall time complexity too much. So if all you wanted to do was solve the problem, there you go. Now, if you really want to lose your mind, let's try to analyze the time complexity of this and then compare it with the memoization time complexity. Now, very quickly, I'm going to add caching to this. So I'm going to create a DP hash map, which we're going to use just like this. So if a word has already been passed into DFS, so if word in DP, then we're going to return whatever the value that we stored for that is. Otherwise, we're going to, instead of returning true here, we're going to end up caching that value in our DP before we end up returning it. And then also here where we actually didn't end up returning false, that works in Python because I guess it just returns undefined or something like that. But otherwise, we can here say DP of the word is going to be set to false and then return that. So it's pretty straightforward to add caching here. 
Oh, and don't forget here to return DP of the word, but now let's run it and you'll see that it is slightly faster than the original solution. In terms of runtime, it's almost exactly the same. I would hope that in a real interview, you wouldn't have to analyze the time complexity of something like this super in depth because it's really not easy. At a high level, we know we're calling this DFS N times. Let's say N is the number of words that we're given. And we know that every time this runs on an individual word, we'll have to iterate for every character in a word. Let's say the max length of a word is L, but then also creating a prefix for that word also takes time and then checking if that word is in a hash set. So it takes time for the length of the prefix, which we can also say is roughly L. So at this point we're at L times L but it gets complicated because we have a possible recursive call. Maybe that recursive call will execute for every iteration of the loop. And then each of those recursive calls will also have a loop and those will also be making recursive calls. So I think that will alter the time complexity as if this were wrapped in another like nested loop. So I think that basically changes the time complexity of this to squaring this. So this is like L times L times L. So L to the power of four, that's before we add caching to it. After we add caching, we know that for an individual word, the number of times this DFS could run, the number of possible inputs it could have is every possible suffix for that individual word. So if this runs and we've already called it with that suffix before, it will immediately return. So that will change this to being L to the power of three. I know that's very much not easy. This is what took me the longest just to analyze the time complexity of this solution. It's easy to go wrong, but if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Check out neatcode.io if you're preparing for coding interviews. It has a ton of free resources. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon soon.